podcast is rated PG-13. Parents strongly cautioned. Some material may be inappropriate for children under 13. Mission to 15. Welcome to the Mission 250 Filmcast, where we are watching the best movies ever made, according to IMDb. And then sometimes during award season, we watch movies that are getting uh, some recognition by, you know, the Golden Globes. The uh, Sometimes we watch movies Oscars. that we want to watch. The Oscars, yeah. Sundance. It sort of varies. The Actors Guild, I guess, is another one. Yeah. Lots of nominations for this one this week. We're watching the 2020 movie Minari, directed by Lee Isaac Chung. The synopsis is... A Korean family starts a farm in 1980s Arkansas. That the shortest uh, synopsis we've ever had. Ever right, had. Right, possibly, yeah. 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 Um, it's a little longer than this is a movie, but it's pretty close. <laughs> but it's pretty close. That's right. Now, I know like the, um, the foreign films have gotten, you know, like, like what happened last week. With, so this is like not a foreign week, film, John. Oh, but it, oh, it's not. So it's no, not. I was right. confused okay. because in the Golden yeah. Globes, you get nominated for best foreign language film, and it won oh. that. But it's a oh. foreign language film, right? Okay. But I for see. the Academy Awards, so they have actual. Here. It's from here. Yeah. Right. Right. So ah, for the Academy Awards, it's going to be best film, or it's going to be nominated for best film and all that. Yeah. So, okay. And it has been. It has six. Is uh, that Oscar why they did that? Maybe. That's where I got confused. Was because I was of the Golden too. Globe Award for like best foreign. I just assumed that meant best foreign film. That's what I thought too. Best, right. Because we're yeah. a dumb American. And I looked it up yeah. when I saw eight twenty four. I was like, oh, I bet they're just uh, distributing it. But it said Plan B. And I was like, that's also an American company that I recognize. Yeah. So yeah. And wow, I saw Brad Pitt's name, and I was like. Yeah, right. What? What is he doing in, in Korea? Executive producer, Brad. Yeah. Ah, I'm surprised Mr. he Brad. didn't want to play the, the Jesus guy. What percentage of our $20 rental do you think goes straight into Brad Pitt's pocket? I don't know. I don't know. Good hopefully job on little, you, Brad, hopefully though. Hopefully a bunch. He's probably got a lot of kids to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> wait. Oh, he's got alimony. <laughs> wait, <laughs> alimony. you said, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> They're still there. So, this week is my turn to go first. Let's uh, talk about ensemble casts. We're back to backing mm-hmm. this with Das Boot. I was surprised when I finished watching boat, this movie. Boat, Denny. Boat. We've tried to improve ourselves. Oh, anyway, sorry. The boat. The boat. Das Boat. Das Boat. Anyway, I was surprised when I f- was done watching this movie that uh, only two of the actors got nominated. Um, I guess that's kind of how it goes. With you don't want to like oversaturate the fields or whatever. But I was surprised that the I'm not going to know anyone's name, so I'm just going to go. You know, father, mother, grandmother. Daughter, son. That's how I'm going to describe sure. characters. The father character and the grandmother character got nominated for Academy Awards. The grandmother was great. awesome. Like, she was yeah. mind-blowingly good. She's probably going to win it. She was hilarious when she was on the she screen. Was. Uh, yeah. Her character just Broken like... ding dong. Yeah, the way... She, <laughs> the scene where she drinks the pee, like, there are so many yeah. scenes. The way she <laughs> cheers on the wrestling. Oh, she's just, like, such a bad influence. Like, she's even yeah. worse than the, I don't know how old that kid's supposed to be, six. She's more immature than that six-year-old kid. Right. And it's yeah. really funny. Um, I laughed hysterically uh, a lot with a lot of what she said. Yeah. Surprisingly, yeah. laugh out loud movie for like the first 75%, maybe. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. expecting just a drama because like the first thing they throw at you is just, this kid is a heart murmur. And I was like, fuck. Right. This right. kid's going to die. He's gonna die. Yeah, he's going to die. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. yeah. And, kid's going to die. And I usually yeah. hate that. But I had like, held out because it's like, well, it was based on, I, you know, we heard that it's based on the director's childhood. So he's not dead. So we were like trying <laughs> so to like, like all it right. can't be. But yeah. it's semi autobiographical. So maybe he kills off himself. And right. The, oh, that's, the so, that's deep, right? That's Isn't that deep? That's yeah. dark. That's way uh, deep. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you know, we, we were just sort of hoping because we were like, we don't want that, that adorable little kid. Don't want yeah. Him to die I'm though. not pretty. I'm just good looking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. I don't like this boy kid. is the man. <laughs> Yeah, hey grandma, yeah. I just, what does it taste like to drink piss? I <laughs> fucking laughed hysterically at yeah. that because he, he he was like laughing while he said it. It yeah. was priceless. <laughs> it was priceless. I love that how he filled the cup up and he just like he was at the door, but he wanted to watch right, it no. happen. So he had he his just, boots yeah, on. Yeah, he was ready. Yeah. <laughs> Make fun of me, grandma. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. awesome. Oh yeah. man, there were a lot of funny parts, and there were a lot of like uh, it does a really good job of weaving the lighthearted, really funny parts with some super heavy drama stuff. Mm. Once the grandmother has the stroke, yeah, this is Oof. assumed spoilers yeah. anyway, but the way she acted that, it was so good. That was It's, it's too late for, say, as, for us to say, oh, you should just go watch this. Sorry. Yeah, but too late. Too bad. But yeah, uh, okay. I mean, the anyway. way she acted that, it was, you didn't think she was acting, you know? Mm-hmm. It, it was actually like the person had a stroke. 
You could easily do that over the top. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It, it's yeah. a fine I mean, line when, to when, walk. When you go full stroke. You don't go full stroke. First, <laughs> when it first happened, when he was like, why'd you, pee? why'd you pee? I was like, damn, he's trying to blame his grandma now, too. Yeah. You know, like it didn't, it didn't catch on for me. No, for like me neither. And a that couple made it seconds. Even, that like, made it like ah, a, a, a real up. hard right, a, a real yeah. like real like <laughs> U-turn there that was like, oh, crap. I'm like, damn, we're going back to the piss joke again? Like, fuck, dude. And then I was like, oh, wait. No, no, no. Damn, she's fucked up. That sucks. Yeah. Poor grandma. Yeah. The second half of the movie, or maybe like the last quarter or whatever, gets pretty heavy, and it loses mm. all the laughs, which is not a bad thing, because really serious shit starts happening. And like, when I say really serious, I mean like small time serious. Like this family right. has small little quibbles that, you know, not small, like it might end up breaking the family up. The kid has a heart problem. That's kind of overlaying everything. The mother had a stroke. The dad is like losing water in his farm and everything. And like, it's all kind of like small time shit you never really hear it's about. It's all normal yeah, shit that people deal shit. with. Like real really? problems yeah. that could destroy people. It's not like a tragedy, right, like a right. drunk driving accident. But right. it's certainly like normal shitty things that are happening. But yeah. how like these things overlay everything else. Like how the kid's heart murmur overlays their whole existence. And how the, the father, you know, his decision to move there overlays every, like it's like this it's not really like dramatic, it's but it, yeah, it's normal it's like life. These, like, people these, go like, through, right? tensions that are just always yeah. there, you know. So yeah, it made it really authentic and, and like relatable. I think it did. And this movie does a thing too, where you know we talk about authentic and like you know I don't know if you call this one a slice of life, but it tries to portray things realistically for the most part. But like this one does it in a pretty entertaining way too, where it kind of seems like if it was or poorly made, it would just be like Oscar bait type of stuff. Um, but I, I think like the acting is so good and the characters are so like realized that none of that happens. Like the, the happy ending sort of thing, any of that stuff where it kind of makes you feel good about the movie. I didn't feel like it was like unwarranted, you know? No, and it didn't feel like it was shoving it in your face either. It was very quiet sort of the way it ended. I, I thought I really appreciated that it could have, tried to make something all dramatic and celebratory or something. And it didn't do that. It was, I, I don't know. It, it just seemed to, I think that feels really unusual that it didn't like, it didn't like go for the throat there kind of. Yeah. Um, no, it just like, kept you know, on going much like no, life right. does. When exactly. Problems yeah, happen, it wasn't you know, like, you didn't even have this moment with right. the, like the, the mom and dad, I love you. I'm sorry. Let's keep the farm. Yes. No, let's keep the no. farm. With it the was just like music. shit happens. It was and understood you deal with it And you keep on yeah, moving. I know, and, but, but when the was, wife almost again, died, like in that, in that fi uh, right. fire in the storage unit or whatever, like that barn thing. Mm -hmm. I, I was like kind of confused by that, but I was like, Oh, I guess, I guess during that, like he abandoned the vegetables to save his wife. And that's yes. what matters. Right, yeah. and right, that's why right. she's going to stay with him, and that's like why push they're comes continue. to shove. He was doing it for the family, You're right? But it was also right? both. Like she was willing to try to sacrifice herself to help, and then he was going to give all that up to help her. I think it's sort of like you know, it, it seemed to lead to the or, and I don't know. It just seemed like that's like then it sort of balanced things out in a way, sort of to where they they sort of realized what was important, both of them. Well, it's um, sort of that but, American yeah. sort of like you know. Yeah. You know, you, you never give up. You always keep trying. You just, you know, you get stubborn and right. you keep, you're reaching you, for something, right? You know, you're yeah, be, too. yeah, right. You're always going to strive for the next big thing because, you, you know, greatness is waiting and, you know, the whole spiel. But like, it's cool because they're not, you know, white Americans, right? They're just, you know, it's like, it's like a whole, it's a whole thing. But they're I mean, immigrants. It was good. They're, it really like, was. It was, they're immigrants, right? Yeah. Like every other person in America right. was at one point, right? And so it's like, you know, you show up in Arkansas and you just fucking make it happen. I, I, it's like, you know, I think that's probably why it's so relatable. And they're like, they're really, they're like a cute little couple with the, with cute kids and, you know, the crazy grandma. I mean, it's like, I mean, who doesn't have this fucking story, right? I mean, like, it's... <laughs> they got a fun a house, totally, the house yeah. on wheels. That's pretty fun. Yeah, right. I mean, they, you know, they, and like, you know, it's, things are on fire, like literally for them, but other things, you know, metaphorically for most people. I think it was, you know, it is kind of yeah. like a slice of life, but it's not like a... Boring slice of life, right. like say Nomad Land. You yeah, know? I was um, going to compare it to Nomad Land too. <laughs> These movies are about Americans that are kind of down on their yeah. luck. Uh, they're yeah. kind of ensemble pieces. There's really good acting in both. There are really good landscape shots in both. A lot of them mm -hmm. during Magic Hour. A lot of yeah, like yeah, rural yeah, yeah. shots outside. But this I, had a story. I think I like this movie better because it had yeah, a story, right. and I felt more like I felt for the characters because in Nomadland, because I knew they were real, but like I said in that other podcast, podcast I didn't care for Francis McDormand's character because it felt like yeah. just a glue in the movie. Whereas this one, 
I was actually really able to get into every one of the characters and just get lost in the story. It was such a good movie where like none of the scenes that went through really broke it for me throughout, you know? Well, you know what I liked is the antagonist is life. It's not yeah. the character. The lack of right? water, you know? Yeah, yeah right. Like it's, like, it's like, sh- it's just crap right. that comes up or, or, in life, you know? Yeah, it wasn't like, like there the, was a character that you no. could be like, fuck The conflict, the growing conflict right. between yeah, the right. two characters, you know? Right, the right, medical right. condition, the stroke, the heart condition, like all of these things that are just like in the, they're just part of their daily lives that create this stress, that create mm-hmm. this tension. And, and yeah, none of them are bad people in. for reacting the way they do no. or... No try to do something in their own way, like the grandmother right. trying to make the kid run or, you know, cause like, there's just like, everybody's in such good hearted nature, even yeah. though like sometimes the wife doesn't see it. And sometimes he doesn't understand why she's upset. And sometimes the kid like, you know, puts piss in a cup and makes his grandmother drink it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but he's sick. Like, whatever, like at happen. the end of the day, right? Like he's six. Like it doesn't really matter. And I mean, I think that there was just so much good there. You could, you could find, you Well, know? she was making him drink that deer antler broth. I mean, yeah. he was pretty annoyed at that. Yeah. Right. I mean, um, it's just, it was such a good, I, I really liked this one. I mean, yeah. this is the type of movie I like too right yeah you know the realistic ones well the, you know, the good are... heartedness about this was also just really uplifting and in, in the all without an exception really the the paul character i really liked oh he was you. great too I mean, yeah mm-hmm. he was he was so likable and yet he you know it would be so easily to really to sort of like ham it up or take it too far or play that kind True. of a role in a very strange way and he did it in a way that was it was endearing don't that's, make that kimchi go away too far that's like a first <laughs> make my I, head so I, I love it you know <laughs> <laughs> that that's kind great. of religiosity to to portray it in a way that that i i don't know i've never that's a first for me i think to to see a character like that and to have him be sympathetic um, I don't know. That's... He kind of reminded me of Sling Blade a little bit. Oh, uh, I guess. This seemed more yeah. like a real... Sling Blade's kind of like a cartoon character. Yeah, I, I like yeah. that movie, but this seemed like, you know, he had a lot going on. They kind of set up his character really quickly, and he really yeah. fit that perfectly. He's like, you know, he's a vet, he's poor, right. he's religious, he's probably got PTSD. He, that's why, right. you know, everyone thinks he's right. just a crazy guy, but he's really just a nice guy trying to, like, live with yep. what he's got. But as crazy as he was, he still didn't believe in the fucking stupid stick thing with the water either. I thought that was great. <laughs> they were hating on that so bad. And it was just like, I love the idea of logic and mind thinking over like, you know, using a stick to find a well, you know? Yeah. I mean, like it just didn't, it was so great. It was like, we don't do that. We use our minds. I was like, yes, that's the right message for kids. Don't fucking <laughs> you know, rely on this, you know, who is supernatural stick that can show you where the water is, right? Like that doesn't... Yeah. So many people in the world do. It's ridiculous. So I, I, you know, totally worked for me. Yeah, it did. I don't think uh, there was wasted scenes that they're, they're like little, the boy going over to the neighbor's house or or his friend's house. I love that. Where you're like chewing tobacco and, and even like you, you see his dad where again, that can be played to be sinister or whatever. And it's not, it's it's like, dude, honestly with the dad and with the, uh, the Paul character, when they first came on screen, they're so often played sinister that I thought it was like, I was a little afraid of them. I I do. I I was was. like, Oh fuck. What's he going to do? Yeah, I totally was. I totally thought he was going to like go racist and, and, and start talking, you know, know. alcoholic abuser. Like, Oh shit, get out of the house kid. But no, right, right, right. But they got rid of that racism stuff in the beginning with the girls, uh, uh, little joke there. I loved that and it, scene and it so didn't really much. Come back. It didn't really come back because the, the movie's yeah. not about the race. It's about the hardships and getting through them. You yeah, know, the kids were the kids it. weren't pointing out the differences like in a mean way. They were just like they're kids and they're just like curious, you know. And it's right. and, st- and they've and they've heard shit. Right. right, right, from others that they don't quite understand either way. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, yeah. I know. Because when they was... walked up to both of them, it seemed like they were gonna like make fun of them, and then there was gonna be conflict. But it was just like. They were friends immediately. Like both of the kids made friends immediately, even That's though what true. it sounded like most movies and things like that make it out to be like, oh well, here comes some racist comments. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. and in that sense, it's almost felt like you know, if you look at it that way, it's almost like maybe it was the movie is playing with us a little bit, like going, ah, this isn't gonna happen. I don't know, maybe. But because even like I, I just I love that one scene. The little girl's like, "Tell me if I say something in your language." Yeah, and you're like, "Oh God, <laughs> this is not." Gonna... But instead, it's cute. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't think there's like wasted scenes here, even though you just drift off into some of these other characters for a bit. Like, oh, and he goes over to the neighbors, but it was good. It was. Uh, or they, they drop into church and you see you see even the 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 way that the women are treating her. Like, oh, she's so cute. And she's like nervous, but I don't it just even it when seems... like these like, hey, there's new people in the church. Stand up yeah. if you're new. And you're like, oh fuck. Like this is right, an entirely right. white church. Here comes this Korean family. Right, right. 
But then he's just like, hey, you have a beautiful family. It's great to have you here. Thanks for coming. And you're like, oh. Yeah, I mean, it was like, yeah. oh, shit, okay. Is that really what Arkansas is like? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm just you so know? ingrained with the past years. Like, it's like a third of the country is like super fucking racist in my mind. So right. all this yeah, just seems, right. it's like a fantasy almost. Like, does this exist? You have to get lucky? No, I liked that they no. really respected him for being a hard worker and them having a good family. And like, that was their values. And they, it didn't matter who else, who they were, really, because they were doing the same thing that they were trying to do. Yeah. And it was very, yeah, it was very like disarming. I have to say, you yeah. know, it's, it's just a like, good word for it. Ah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I can, I can get into this, you know, it's cause you don't see that anymore. You're right. And, and this is, I think this is hard to do. I, I think yeah. it's easier to play to your audience and, and have the show where the puppies are kicked or whatever, whatever mm. it is. It's like, everybody goes, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> and, and that can rile you up and, and make yeah. you see conflict. And I don't know. I, yeah. I think, I think it's impressive. I actually, you know, compared to even, I mean, Das Boot, it was, wasn't really, it was another ensemble cast where, where it was, it, the enemy wasn't even really personified. It was really like them banding together against what they had, whatever it is that they had to deal with. It wasn't really like them, like an actual, I don't know, that is maybe going too far. I'm just trying to, these two films are so different and yet I have some similar feelings about them, which to me is really bizarre. Yeah, that is bizarre, but it's good though. Yeah. Cause I mean, they're close in, in the sense that they're showing reality. Of the reality of the characters that, that you know, they're whatever they're facing. So I guess there is quite a bit of similar there. It's just I, one's at war, one's in, you know, trying to make right. a garden. Yeah. I still in both movies, boot. it's like, <laughs> Sorry. you said boot. Yeah. I, mean, I, I said yeah, boot. Boat? That's boot. Uh, yeah. But I mean, it, also between the two, it's like most of the characters, they seem like real people. Like you don't necessarily, mm. even though, like some people might get less screen time. They might have less power. Like the father in this movie has the most power because he's like the better worker and he probably makes more money, et cetera. And he's the man, you know, stronger, all that yeah. stuff. Like the captain in the ship, like he has more power because he's a command of people, but like everyone below them is like an individual character that seems fully realized. Isn't there just to serve it like a narrative purpose, like mm. a lot of other movies have. And it's kind of just like something you take for granted. And I think it's mm. a good, I mean, it's good to take for granted. Otherwise a lot of other movies would suck to you if you had to have this kind of like quality for characters. But this one is that I think that's the biggest similarity between these two. Where you maybe right. you may be right. You feel like you've again similarly. You feel like you've been somewhere with them as a group, kind of too, because they seem real, and it seems like you were there ex watching this happen, as opposed to seeing a dramatic thread and and being like, all right, now they're going to have their moment, and then we're going to bring this other guy in because that's going to create some tension. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. we're going to whatever. It just feels like you're being like directed and. Mm -hmm. And the story is being moved along in certain ways according to what they want to what do they want you to get out of the, the story. In a shittier and, version yeah. of this movie, the little kid, after the grandmother had a stroke, would be, you know, the grandmother would tell him to run. The kid would run. He'd have a freaking heart attack. They'd rush him to the hospital. It'd all be dramatic, but he'd be saved. <laughs> and, he'd and then the grandmother right. would all, like, weep right. and apologize. But what happens in this yeah. one is the kid goes to the doctor. He's fine. The dad sells his vegetables. That's good. But then the parents have a fight in a parking lot because... He didn't, right. you know, slightly wanted his vegetables more than like the health of his kid who didn't right, have yeah. any immediate danger to him, but just like the overall, right. What she perceived right. to just be the his, thought, the principle of it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's like ongoing struggle with them. Like she feels like he put his dream above their family, above the health of their kid. And that, that him trying to bring the box of vegetables in really sort of sealed it. And, and also I think, you know, what she alluded to too, is that, um, and this makes a lot of sense that the the health condition of their son forced them to stay together no matter what. Like they can't just be single parents and take care of him if he needs surgery and things like that. That just can't happen. And she's like, well, it's almost like that one crisis pass, passing leads to the, her really wondering what their marriage is about. Now that he's at, looks like he might be in the clear now that their son might be in the clear. It's like, now I, now I can tell you, I don't, you know, I, I don't think you valued our, our ah. son's life over your farm. Mm. It, it's I like now that, that that tension has yeah. gone. Yeah, but it's like you you stay together for certain things, right? Or you you it, and she alluded to the the and I, I can't imagine that. I mean, we had a dog that had a heart murmur, and that stressed us out to no end. I can't imagine, <laughs> you know, if if you're yeah. if you're thinking of of your of your child and and any kind of like fragile condition like that, where you're terrified that something's going to happen like that, what that does to your relationship, and and then but also it's like, well, there's no way we'll get a divorce and he's got this heart condition. There's no way we're going to like separate, you know, it just sort of like means you have to work it out, even if you're, you're not happy about it. And that can build a lot of resentment. 
Yeah, and I think that that, you know, is what people face most of the time. Yeah. And it's not yeah. it's not the murmur, it's anything else in life. I mean, right. you also have to, you know, remember that they are so busy with whatever they're doing, there's no time to communicate that like while she's not, you know, fulfilled, he's signaling himself like we had nothing before, right? Because they had that little conversation right. with the boy about that. We had right, nothing right. before. Like, what what are you going on about? We came from nothing. We don't have anything. Without this farm, without the fucking vegetables, the kid can't get the surgery. Like, so like, they, they're chicken like she, could, she couldn't thing. even like, work. You know what I mean? Make like, money in California because right. she was too yeah. slow right. at like, sexing the chickens. The horse has to come and then the carriage, yeah. right? Like, they, you, so. can't, you can't go the other direction, right? You're not going to go anywhere. So like, you know, there's, but so they're so yeah. busy. They're so yep. busy with shit that they don't talk and they don't communicate. And then like right. one and thing the, happens after stressed. another and then the mother gets sick and then the fire and yep. like they're not able to even like talk about it. And then when they do, they just have a fight. And yeah. I mean, that's like called regular. They shit both are reasonable. People, like know? the wife is reasonable in the sense of don't let's not risk it. Let's not risk these things. Yeah. Let's, let's be happy right. with what we have. And he's, and he's like, like, we like, have to. Well, we like, can't. Right. Like <laughs> yeah. we, we've got to risk things because this is not, this is not going to end well. Right. Um, and right. and we want something better for our kids and all that and and maybe he you know there's part of that that's selfish that he wants something better for himself he he wants he doesn't want to sex chickens all his life and that be mm. all his life is staring at chicken butts mm. so you know I mean that makes a lot of sense too so right yeah, I think it, you know when um, people are at extremes like that it's hard to meet in the middle yeah, especially when yeah. life is happening and I think that's kind right, of the whole right. story you know it's why it's so relatable. I think you can be anybody. You can be a male, female, you can be, you know, Korean, American, you know, it doesn't matter. Right. So I, I think, I don't know. And I'm sure there are other films that you can think of eventually that, that capture this, this idea of this. I mean, there are events in this movie, but capturing that sort of like low grade tension of life, the, the, mm -hmm. the sort of like stress, you know, COVID's an example for a lot of people, right? Being stuck at home, being scared about all of this stuff. Um, that kind of like, background tension that you have to just deal with and how that impacts your relationships um, and how you like make decisions based on that. I mean, that, and you don't even notice it that you're doing right. Or right. you don't until yeah. but things can flare up around it for sure. Right. I mean, man, I, I, I just, you know, being at home, like for us, you know, when do we send the kids to school? Uh, when do we pull them out? When do we, all of that. And, and that creates like, we've like my wife and I haven't always agreed on it. It creates a lot of tension in terms of like, what's the right decision here. We don't know. Um, mm, and mm. you know, we keep them home. That makes it very hard to work, but we might keep them safer and blah, blah, blah. It's anyway, and it, 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 it's it, ongoing and it, that's just kind of yeah, what this yeah, movie's yeah. touching I, I, on. I think yeah. this movie captures, seems to capture that well. At the same time, it's that there's this, it, that the characters are so likable. It, it, it like, it does this, I, I think, wonderful thing about helping you kind of feel better about that. I don't mm. know. By, by seeing such likable people going through this, it helps, it helps me feel better about that about us my me going through it it's like That's wow these nice yeah. people are doing are going through this kind of thing i i like i'm that. not doing anything wrong this is just life right this is what right. happens <laughs> right and like you know sometimes things just come up and yeah. right. you know that's like Knowing that that's kind of the case and accepting it makes your life you know well rounded i guess i mean that's yeah. all the other thing i mean i get it. that's why i think maybe everybody like i even i liked this one right because i yeah. think you can get a lot out of it from whatever your perspective is in the current climate of your life. So it's definitely a must see. I think I could see why it's up for awards. It's and it's hilarious. It is like, and the it's first funny. Half, it right. I was laughing out loud at the movie. No, no, oh, yeah. It was that the, the interactions, yeah. the characters. Yeah. I, I love, um, Oh God! What was the the grandma was like? You're crying over anchovies, <laughs> <laughs> or she's watching ref, re, wrestling and she's like, why, why, just, why, yeah. why, why, <laughs> why, 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 why? <laughs> just like confused about why yeah. they're hitting each other like that. Yeah, <laughs> and it's fake. It's wrestling, right? So it's not even like it's boxing or something. That anchovy uh, scene too, like that was kind of funny, but that also like that was a little it was, sad, heart, it was heartwarming. Too. Just like she yeah, missed her home, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. No, it was it was a good combo. Yeah. But I, I I laughed pretty loud about. It. I just thought that was a great line. <laughs> <laughs> Crying over anchovy. Anchovy. What the fuck matter with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the music is awesome too. It was. It was an interesting combination of like like piano plus digital effects. I I liked it. But yeah. yeah, not quite classical. Yeah. You know? yeah, it reminded me of yeah. like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. It sounded almost like vocal, like digital vocal lines were had an effect put yeah, on like it a melody, like a uh, like a like a war, like a, war, like a music song almost, like the warbly, mm. like I don't even know how to. You know the theme song to uh, "One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest"? No, no, no. not off the top we'll, of my head. We'll, we'll get to experience that soon, but it's, it's a good one. But it has it's a it's a weird one. It it reminds me of this. 
Uh, but I, they use that same kind of theme throughout, and I didn't, never got sick of it. I thought it was like, you know, whatever it did, it fit the the mood that it was going for in the movie. It yep. did. It did that. Yeah, it's that Mellotron type of like vocal choir. It was because it was back. also yeah, like pretty good stuff. kind of like subdued. It was like not in your face kind that of. I was like, mixed yeah. lightly, and they had the strings yeah. around it, and it was like a very yeah. It was a very modern take on that that sound, which is great. I love it. I could sit there and listen to that shit all day. Yeah, you know, and overthink. And TC, no, did perfect. you hate the uh, the vistas in this movie, or did you like them? The vistas. Uh, the you know the. Horizon shots during Magic Hour. Ah, they were good because they were part of a story. Yeah, exactly. That's all yeah. it takes. <laughs> put them in the context of a story. On them. I mean, this, yeah, this right. movie was right, um, right. Don't just put them up like economical a 4K too, television. though. It didn't. It didn't linger on things for a ton of time either. I don't think it. It. I don't feel like it anyway. It kind of did. Just, I mean, just, well, they were usually it, it worked, using those but, shots to make you to get you somewhere. Right. I mean, yeah, there was a shot was where he was kind of kneeling in his field, like he was crouched down in the field, and that shot was like ten seconds long. Yeah, but it oh, it was good. It was good. I that agree, but good. it was long. <laughs> but you're right. You know, you're right. Yeah, you're right. It right, didn't feel right. long. I guess I didn't get I didn't get bored of it. Yeah. Or I didn't like. Or right, I, because I didn't it's not think... just a shot to have a shot. Right, because you're thinking about what he's thinking about. Like he <laughs> right, he has yeah. a lot going on, and right, you're right, like right. your mind's you're going. The to... I mean, in No Man Land, it was more like, wow, this is this is nice looking. I just wish I was in the theater or something where I could really feel like I'm I'm in, I'm yeah. in that. Vista this is nice looking, and that's all that this is. This is nice looking, and it's almost like I'm in a car. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So that yeah, there were a lot of good shots. The vistas. Yeah, I like the camera movements too. Like even they had a lot of scenes in that chicken sexting place. That Ooh, was called chicken sexting. Sexting. Chicken sexting. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Who gave these I chicken really sexting? Chicken sexting. God damn it! Mobile chickens. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez, they're gonna hack yeah, my phone well. now. That's the funny. chicken sexting place. Uh, the cheese. Uh, a part yeah. of the chicken sexting. There was a lot of like camera movements in those scenes. Like I never got bored of those either. You'd think I thought about it like in the later half. I was like, wow, I'm still not bored of these scenes, even though it's the same warehouse looking Mm. place. Like they're keeping it interesting somehow. Not much to do in there, but sex, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I wonder what the permits were like, you know, to get those little chickens to (laughs) for a day on the on the set. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure. If they're yeah. killing half the males anyway. They probably didn't need to do too they're much paperwork. They're yeah, useless as far as the guy I mean, said, you know? Yeah. You know, nobody needs them. Oh, that was that was a striking scene. I, I like that between the, the, the father and the boy about that's where they put the males. Dude, <laughs> I was surprised sure by we... that. Is that true? Yeah. They just burn the males? <laughs> probably. I'm assuming. I don't I know. I mean, that seems I, like I, animal cruelty, doesn't they it? They taste bad. Is there a thing? Well, no one cares about that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know in terms of what happens like at, at meat plants and produce plants. I'm not sure if there's a whole yeah, lot of happy whole... humanity going on. I don't there. think there's much. Yeah. Well, what's the whole deal much. with like, you know, it's like, don't wear animal skins. You waste the animal. What about half the chickens? We're wasting half of the chickens. <laughs> you don't care about the fucking chickens. Why aren't you standing outside the goddamn Wendy's? <laughs> That one tickled no, me. No, John, <laughs> one, you don't agree with I me? Come on. I'm sorry. I was I I making a pretty solid point here. About this. I think that's funny as hell. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah but, well, it's a good question. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it was kind of this back in the 80s. Back in the 80s, it was what was done. So I'm sorry, Denny. I missed whatever attempt at humor you had, which apparently succeeded because TC was attempt, laughing. Attempt, yeah, a succession. It, it wasn't an attempt. It must have been. I, I'm sorry. It was successful, but I missed it. Can you do it again? <laughs> I can try. <laughs> Let's go. It's going to fall and flat. take two. So what's the deal with chicken what's places the- <laughs> and people going to skin it? You got protesters outside fur shops just like you do outside Planned Parenthood. But oh, then you can walk around and it's it's two the Wendy's. Chickens. I don't know. This is going down. Uh, really it's your fault, Johnny. It's your fault. Yeah. It is my fault. I apologize. Let's all let's walk let's all all that move back. on from that. Yep. <laughs> I got my finger on the editing button right now. That is good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that tornado uh, scene that was really intense. I thought it was mm-hmm. really well done. I was yeah, afraid for them. They said it's a tornado watch. We didn't have to worry. I was like, oh, uh, don't say that. <laughs> but again, again, what the film does, which the more the more you guys bring it up and talk about too, the more I, I, I appreciate it that it's done within the background tension. It's how these events come along and they exacerbate all these other things, like right. how the tornado watch exacerbated their conflict. Um, oh yeah, her hatred for him really got there. Right, right that then. is so yeah. real life. To, in terms of like how you have all this this background tension, and then you have these events that happen that sort of explode it. 
and that again was extremely well done the way the way they sort of like play mm. that out yeah so yeah it's uh right where situational stress really just changes mm-hmm. a whole relationship it's it's a common thing i like the couple parts where they uh I mean, like the Mountain Dew joke was pretty funny. They all thought like they didn't know what it was. Water from the mountain. Yeah, yeah. it's like it's good yeah. for you. He's drinking it for breakfast. <laughs> he loves Mountain Dew. Yeah. Like, oh Jesus, giving the kid with a heart murmur and Mountain Dew. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, maybe Seems that's like what. Great. Maybe that's what closed up the hole. All this Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah, the maybe. kid knew. The kid was onto something. Or maybe they were giving him Mountain Dew since he was like a baby, and that was bad for his heart. Who knows? Um, my but like favorite, the burning trash favorite. thing too. Like they didn't know about how that's a bad thing. Right. You know? Well, they didn't have, or they, what would you do? I guess you'd have to haul it. Like, you'd have to you'd haul have it, to haul it like should. hours Burning away. Trash is bad for the environment. Well, yeah, now, nowadays, you know, but, um, but even then, it, yeah, you know, so. Yeah, I guess they, and scary. Know. Yeah, don't, I mean, they're throwing light bulbs in there. Come on. Yeah. I know. That was, and like, you knew that. I mean, come on, you, you burn and shit in the middle of a field. What's the matter with you? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's not going to catch on right fire. Right next to your farm, right yeah. next to your old wooden With building. all the hay. It's dried out. There's no water. Like, right. what's the matter with you? I don't know. That was on grandma's list of things to do. I guess you know, so. Barely alive Post grandma. Stroke. Burn trash. Don't forget to burn the trash, grandma. Yeah. It just doesn't seem like good planning. That scene was right. intense. A, that doesn't well. You hit the edit button on that one, too. Uh, yeah. it of stroke, grandma. <laughs> Keep it in, John. Making fun of people with strokes. Uh, makes me feel okay. powerful. Okay, whatever. <laughs> the, title was, in now. the title threw me off. I don't know about you guys. Did you get any deeper meaning about the uh, Minari stuff? Uh, is it like just that the, the grandmother's like, it? influence will live past her death sort of thing that we're supposed to assume? Or like, I don't know why, like there's a lot of other stuff going on in the movie and the Minari seemed kind of inconsequential a little bit. Like there was like, why not just kind call of, it? I, I felt like somehow it meant something more, but I'm not sure exactly what. So it's a good point. I mean, it seemed like, I don't know. I liked, I enjoyed how it ended where like your grandma picked a good spot. This is flourishing here. Just sort of meaning somehow like, I don't know, like they're going to do well. It. Like, I think like you nailed gonna... it, Denny. I think it's that you, you know, the people around you like that leaving lasting impressions forever. Yeah. And life continues on, but you don't forget things like the Minari. Yeah. Right? And I had a question, like they don't show her after, I don't think they show her after that scene, right? It kind of like cuts to the future where they're going to that place. I had a question of whether or not we're to assume that the grandmother had died by that point. Like, is she oh. dead yeah, I think at we're the supposed end? to assume that she's gone. Really? Okay. Oh no, I didn't know that. Yeah, I assumed yeah, that yeah. she was just back at the house. I assumed that I that that, that was she was still with them. I assumed the, the she was boy. dead just because that's how, or how they ended the movie. Like that's the only uh, reason, you know. I think yeah, and uh, and also they had that little scene where she was watching them sleep in, and she was having like a meltdown inside because she just burned the fucking house down. Oh, I thought that I was like the she... transition where like, she's like, this is, she's making her exit, right? Oh, like they're sleeping together that. and they're all, cause yeah. usually they were sleeping with the grandma, right? I thought she a was lot. watching. Ha- I thought she was almost, well, I didn't see her stressed out at that point. I thought she was like, no, she was sitting you know? there looking at them. Like that's like, they're, they're together. They're the one, they're in one, they're in one oh. little piece now. Cause they're all sleeping together on the floor and I'm, you know, the odd person out. Because I just, and she felt bad. I just felt like it was the way they put it right next to that end scene with the Minari, that it was like, that was like her exit. So you think she killed herself? No, I just think she was old and died. That's Uh it. She had the stroke. You know, I think that was like her natural progression. Okay. And plus the Minari thing was the, Minari was the thing that him or she and the kid did. Right. Not the father. Right. Yeah. So like it would be odd now that the father went with the basket and all that. Oh, I thing. just thought, I just assumed she couldn't because she's so frail and and I mean that's all logical and... too. I just this yeah. is what I in my head I, I thought know. she was that's dead. A, it interesting. Yeah. I thought yeah. someone was gonna get bit by a snake. Right? I mean they put the snake <laughs> I mean, thing in there yeah, so much. I know, I know. She said it twice. I can't yeah. think of this movie's gonna get us. Like it's like here comes the tragedy. There you know, yeah, I know. Like but typical isn't that foreshadowing how we all think? plot device. Isn't that how we all think, yeah, though, yeah. in regular life? Like, oh my God, the worst is going to happen. No, nope, no, nope, kid's fine. It's also oh, like the structure, true, right? you know? <laughs> it's the structure of like 90% of the movies, too, where it's like, that too. here's the thing yeah, you put in the beginning. Point. It's going to come back later. Otherwise, why is it in that's the movie? A good right, point. right. I'm that's expecting an Oscar nominated film that, that sometime, at some point, a bear is going to show up and carve <laughs> and just maul out the, the back of yeah, one right. Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> it already happened, John. It's got to happen. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. Is it going to be DiCaprio again? 
Yeah, well, sure. He's it's the best. Cabrio like, or Johnny he's Depp. the best at getting yeah. his back. Were you nervous the entire time during Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because you thought a bear was going to come out of nowhere yeah. and just oh, walk oh, the shit yeah. out of him? <laughs> yeah, it was going to yeah. happen. No, it, I, but it's just you have this that somewhere. There's going to be some kind of high drama mm-hmm. that's going to happen and and beat you over the head, and that that's pretty. But pretty there was for, high drama though. Once the the burning of the building was pretty high the drama. The burning of the building was. It was. But no one died. I don't know. It, right. it seemed appropriate, and yeah, it wasn't. At that point, things seem believable. So where you get to that point, it's like, yeah, that happened, sort of. It wasn't more like, uh, I don't know. It, it just didn't feel, it wasn't a, a very significant event. It just didn't feel so dramatic. Maybe that's because the whole tone of the film is so even coming mm-hmm. up to that point right there that it's like, yeah. Although I was like, I was really upset. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, so shit, she's going to die. And yeah. I was also thinking, yeah, she's going to die. She's going to die. The wife's going to die. She's going to be dead. <laughs> yeah, because I kept, I kept. Because <laughs> once in the first nope. five minutes, like nope. the kid's gonna die, and you're like, someone's gonna die. Somebody yeah, is yeah. gonna Somebody die. Somebody's definitely yeah. dying here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just who's gonna be? With? Yeah, this yeah. is a two hour long. Who's gonna Rip die? The just a, Fuck. <laughs> just kill him in the beginning. Come on, let yeah. me live in yeah. peace here. Maybe that's why I completed the thought that the grandma died. Mm, I'm like, well, maybe. someone's gotta die. Someone's so gotta she's die. dead. You know. And I was just trying to find a like. I mean, movies name themselves things for a reason, and it seemed like if it hadn't been named Minari, I wouldn't have thought Minari would be a good name for this movie. It was one of the most prominent things in the movie. No, that wouldn't have been the case. Maybe he's just paying homage to his. There's like an interview on NPR where where the director just says that he saw the Minari as something that stays with you. That's something that that's like more permanent that lasts. Okay. Um, that, yeah, that so it was you you know, so that getting to TC's point, point, I think too. Yeah, yeah. Um, or was it Denny's or both of you? Maybe it was Denny yeah, and then TC agreed. I don't know anymore. Yeah, it doesn't um, matter. But that's kind of the there was kind of the idea that it's something that you plant that, that that is there and that lasts beyond all these other things that happen. Mm. You know, and and that's the idea of you know it was something that was simple and they weren't even paying attention to it. And maybe that's the idea of these relationships or other things that you carry with you throughout all these different things and tensions in your life but still are, they last and, and they're always with you and, and they're a good thing. Um, but I don't know. I like that. I like that. We'll go with that. Yeah. yeah. I do like it how it is to kind of open, you know, for interpretation. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You guys have anything else on the movie? No. No, I think we've kind of, I think we're all in agreement like in this too, in terms of the way it, it, it hit us. Um, you know, yeah. But yeah. It was great. Yeah. I loved it. It was awesome. Yeah. Would recommend to everybody I know, even if they don't like you're, subtitle you, movies. I don't know if you, you finished your right. thought. Were you thinking that like more people should have been nominated um, out of the cast? I think so. As, as bad as, like, so the character that maybe acts the most, because I've seen him before, was the Paul character. Mm-hmm. I've seen that guy a lot in other movies, and his character was pretty unique. Like, he was not a, a regular person. Like, everyone else was a good actor, and they were good Maybe even more impressive because they were just normal people, right. and yet the characters stood out a lot. This guy was like a crazy kook guy who dragged the cross every Sunday, sort of right. wacko. I thought he did a good job <laughs> not making it a cartoon; like he seemed like oh, a yeah. real person. No, making him making him endearing and and crazy. I think that's that's a I think that's a trick. I, I don't, not a trick. I mean that that's I imagine that's difficult. Um, but yeah, yeah, I agree. I, you're, you're right. He was sort of, and, and it was, it was in a way, it's sort of a good foil compared, you know, it might've been, it's sort of good to have that kind of like really sort of strange person there. And it sort of like balances a lot of the other thing that are, that are going on, you know, mm. but yeah, I agree. He, he, yeah, you'd think he would, but he didn't get nominated for anything, huh? Did he get no, no globe and globe, nothing? Yeah. No. So, and then like, yeah. even just like the way Paul reacted to him is the way I love it when movies kind of give you a character you can relate to, like. Mm-hmm. The uh, the father character calls oh, Paul yeah, crazy yeah. like immediately when he starts doing right. the weird talk speaking in tongues. Right. You're like, okay, this movie isn't out of control. He thinks this guy's crazy, just right. like yeah. I would. So no, I mean, no, this no, is still the relationship reality. was great. Yeah. How they played that the relationship between those two characters was was really wonderful. Where they still you saw a bond there, and you saw you saw affection between them, even though you know the dad still thinks Paul's pretty crazy. He yeah, doesn't want right. anything to do with his religion, right? Um, right, or right. much anyway. So yeah, that that was also pretty cool. I, and I thought that the children were wonderful. Were really, the, I mean, the girl didn't have as much to do, um, but she was great with what she did. She was great. I thought she had her just, moments. Yeah, yeah. yeah she the, did. The she little did. boy, like, how does he? I don't see how the dad is a better actor than the little kid. He's a little kid, and he's yeah. he's really fucking good. Like, he's one of the best kid mm. actors I think I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. He's up there in top tier kid actors I've seen. The grandmother deserves it, but I didn't think the father was like. 
he was great and deserving of an award, but like the mother also was great. Yeah. And like, no, she I'm surprised. Had, I thought she had a more difficult, she had to show a lot more like, um, she, she, she had to showed do more a lot more by of, her, doing of, her, of her emotions. Yeah. She, she's really showed how, how annoyed she was a lot. And yeah, well. her teary eyes were, you know, yeah. geez, those were um, eat yeah. right through my soul. Yeah. But I was just surprised she, you know? because usually with these types of awards, you could be like, oh, I mean, the grandmother, yes, she was right, the right. best in the movie and deserving of the award. But I just like the father, like I, it's just. Isn't he just more famous? So he's a, you know, destined is for he? A, an award. I, he was I've seen him before. I he was in like, like The Walking Dead, I think. Oh, I don't know that one. Oh, is that who he was? Yeah. But I haven't seen him too much. Um, no. But I mean, it's just him in the, in the, the wife. He wasn't in the train one. But the no, zombies? he wasn't. In the, no, he was not in the train one. Uh, okay, wait, yeah. Train to Busan? Yeah, Busan? No, he wasn't in that one. I thought you were sure? talking about uh, Snowpiercer, the train one, the uh, Korean train. The movie. other train one might yeah. be that one. Maybe I am talking. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. So no, I guess a couple nothing. good Korean train movies yeah. out there, everyone. If yeah, you're looking I know, for right? a good train movie. The zombie one was sick. Oh, the zombie one was good. Yeah, awesome. John, have you seen that one? Yeah. No, train to, is it called Busan? Train to Busan? Yeah, I think it's. I don't know. I don't want Ooh, zombies baby, on a train. I'm, I'm, movie. So, I'm so not dude. into zombies. Really, yeah. I don't like zombies. Oh films. no, this one, this one's all really scary. No, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like the 28 Days Later, 28 Weeks Later movies. I the first one was was pretty spooky. Did I'll you see admit. the second one? Even, uh, <laughs> I saw parts of the second one. You didn't see the second one. The second one was just like it was as good as the first one. It was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I saw. I only saw parts of it, but I that doesn't uh, count. How do you watch parts of movies and have an opinion on it? Come on, John. Because he went to sleep. I wasn't about to say it. I'm just saying. I wasn't saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. General, in I, I'm not really like zombie movies. I don't like <laughs> zombie video games. I'm just like just tired of zombies. Oh, he's tired of so much stuff. John's getting old. He's getting yeah. tired. Just like Batman. Oh, just like Spider Man. Just like zombies. No. Back in my day. I didn't watch zombies. We know, so he had one zombie movie, maybe two, and that's all the zombies you had in your life. <laughs> what do you think about Shaun of good. the Dead? Oh, now I will make an argument about <laughs> it at funny. some point. Us doing those three films, I would uh, do that. I would agree I, to that right now. I, I fucking love it. Yes. <laughs> Not even difficult to fucking yeah. agree so, to. So that yeah. would be that would clearly be my zombie exception, for sure, because because I love those films. What so about much. Zombie Land? No. no, no, so, we're no. doing all of them, John. Just no, we're doing no, all the zombie no, movies, oh <laughs> all the way Mission back to the zombie. 70s. <laughs> Mission Zombie film cast. Mission oh, Zombie gosh. film cast. <laughs> nah, it sounds bad. Please no. So if we have nothing else on this movie, yep, I have something I want to do. It'll be an add-on to this episode uh, to stretch episode. out the content, and it's also relevant. Uh, but I mean, you, we did so, a lot. We did a good time out here. It was pretty a good, good. Amount of time. Yeah. yeah, yeah with no trivia. I'm sorry. There's no trivia. John already said that this movie was based on this semi autobiographical for the uh, yeah. the director Lee Isaac Chung, who was the writer director. Who this is his one of his first major films. He's a pretty new director. He's also a cinematographer, but he didn't do the cinematography for this movie. Mm. So hmm. I don't know how good of a cinematographer he was, but. He at least he knows how one. to direct the cinematographer. I thought it was pretty good cinematography in this movie, too. Yep. Uh, how many times are you going to say that? Say it one more time. Cinematographer. cinematographer. <laughs> the, so this movie still might win uh, the Actors Guild Award for Best Ensemble, which is like mm -hmm. the top, you know. Oh, I, I wish that. it. I think it, I don't. Well, I haven't seen many others. I mean, I guess No Man Land would probably maybe be on there, too. It's maybe. not. So but they this weren't, year. No, because they weren't acting together hardly in No Man Land right. anyway. The nominations for this year are The Five Bloods, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Minari, One Night in Miami, and The Trial of Chicago 7. We've got more movies to see, I think. I can yeah. tell you that The Five Bloods is not going to win. <laughs> That's all I can okay. tell you. All right. Well, I don't have Why? your you don't like it or Thanks, Denny. It was bad acting. <laughs> it was bad. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that doesn't always. It just means that usually that they win. Those ones always yeah, win. It's just your opinion, me. man. Come on. Yeah. It's just like your opinion. Well, last year Parasite won, and that also took Best Picture. So that was well, great. That, that was great. That was fantastic. I've watched yeah. that like three times. Yeah. Oh, really? Maybe oh. four. I have what that one. Uh, I have two different hard copies of that one. I have the 4K yeah. Blu-ray, and then I also have the. uh Criterion the collection and white? with the actual no. Is there a black and white one? Yeah, I thought I thought with Parasite he released a black and white version. I thought it was just a graphic novel or something. No, no, I thought there was a black and white version he was gonna release. I'm not sure he ever did. I, I don't have uh, that one. Huh. Maybe he's gonna like end to end it with the uh, HBO TV show or something. Oh, and then there's there's that that's coming out too. Yeah. No, there's a black and white. I see Parasite. Parasite, black and white. Which uh DVD does it come with? There's a limited edition steel box. I hate steel books. Freaking steel, steel books. books taking up my shelf space. 
I already got like a oh, thousand there's, goddamn there's Blu-rays. There's a Parasite Blu-ray, the Parasite Blu-ray bonus black and white edition to this set. A Parasite. A books. Parasite Blu-ray. Par- a Parasite <laughs> Blu-ray. Uh, sorry, guys. Trying to provide some information here. <laughs> You're not getting shit for, for all those uh, in the Parasite uh, Blue Ways. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Find them at the Red Blocks. Uh, anyway, so there is a, there is a black and white version of it. That's all. I'm, I am right, even if I can't talk. <laughs> so this movie got nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. Do you guys think, which ones have we seen? The Best Picture nominees this year are Judas and the Black Messiah, Mank, Not Minari, it. Nomadland, Promising Young Women, Sound of Metal, The Father, and The Trial of the Chicago Seven. I have only seen, I've only seen these two. I've only seen Nomadland in this one. So Yeah, me too. But this one, I again... I've I seen the, Judas the, and the Black Messiah, Mank, yeah. Promising Young Women, and The Sound of Metal as well. I hear Sound have. of Metal was good. It was stressful. Oh, no shit. I mean, it was really, really good. The guy maybe deserves Best Actor. And it's a really good movie, but man, it's about losing your hearing, and it's just, it's scary. Just thinking about that for two hours is is scary. Right. And right. the guy's acting right. is so intense because he can't handle being deaf that it's just like, it's stress-inducing. Oh. Uh, I might watch that. No, you should. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I should for a few reasons. So, so seeing two of these pictures, guys, would you say that this movie should, uh, you know, is it deserving of Best Picture if it happens to get it? Against Nomadland? Fuck yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, but against, against many of the movies that I've seen, I, I, I think this movie is pretty unique, and I, I would like to see it get the best pictures. I don't think I've... I'm sure there are other movies like this, but I, don't, I can't recall something that, that had this tone. I'm only, I can was, only think of, like, A Separation, but that one wasn't funny, and it was just really much heavier, but it was family drama ah, stuff. That's a good, that's a good one. That, you're right. Wasn't that the... Hmm, was that the... Iranian film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the yeah. husband and wife that kind of fight. Right. You're right. That, that was, was totally one. like that. You're right. Yeah, but not, but no zero that. humor in that movie. You know? No, no, That's, I know there was there was no levity there. That one, that one was a lot more painful, I think, because of that too. But but it also still was. You're right. You're right. Yeah, call, it was man. just life. Yeah. Life, it seemed man. heavy, but it was just like interfamily bickering. Almost. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. Good point. But yeah, I've seen. Six out of the eight of these, and for whatever, whatever it's worth, I think that this one was the best one by far. Not that the other ones are bad or they're not worth watching, but I don't know. This one, there are parts in the other movies that just aren't as special as this one. I don't know. It's got to be super hard to put together a piece with so many actors that feels so cohesive and realistic, and then mm-hmm. is also so entertaining and heartwarming and dramatic. Right. With, with all these different like parts, you're, in the you're movie. having a movie moment, or like right. you're having like here's the. Here's the movie part where you have this high drama. Here's the Oscar scene or here's the real comedy scene or mm. I don't know. Yeah. It's a tie it into like the country. What's going on now? No man land kind of has a leg up because it's, it has to do with people being stuff. like stuff. I appreciate but I mean, that about no man land because of how it makes you think about a, a lot of people now and what, what's going on now. So, which but this I'm movie's just about immigrants point, like and there's a lot of, you know, opinions about immigrants happening now as well. Uh, right, right. So I mean, it's that's true. It's weird because it's not as directly relevant to. It doesn't seem as directly related to what's going on now with immigrants as what's going on in Nomad Land well, with what's going it, on now hard. with COVID. It, I mean, yeah, and and also, I mean, Nomad Land set in the present, and this one was set in the eighties, and so you you immediately can sort of have a bit of that disconnect, um, just in terms of its its timing. And and No Man Land is is addressing something that's relatively new in terms of the way of the sort of um, transient workforce sort of situation. So so there, so No Man Land feels, in some ways, I don't know, it feels more modern. But the tone of this movie, the tone of uh, Minari and how it makes you feel about people, is so much more like, man, this is a nice nice feeling to have now. <laughs> when when like yeah. you say we. You know, and there certainly there's no question that there's the racism, bigotry, and echo chambers that are that are really horrible and disgusting. But it's nice to see some of the other side of it too, and and think about people as trying to get by and generally good hearted as well. And mm-hmm. and I don't know that there's that's also a really important message these days too. Yeah, we watch a lot of like a lot of movies are super negative, and this yeah. one was. It had like sad and scary moments, but like it wasn't negative, you know? It wasn't about mm-hmm. how bad people are or how fucked the world is, you know? No, it was positive in it the sense positive. that you always keep going. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. right. that's what humans do. And look at the positives and continue to move forward, which is not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Minari, Minari. Oh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. 
Minari, Minari, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Oh, Minari, Timmy, Minari, Timmy's coming oh, back and he's hitting the stage. <laughs> he's cleaned Minari, himself up Minari. and now he's a singer. You're going to make me cry, dude. You're going to make me cry, dude. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Does TC ha- does a, does Timmy have a broken dick? Does he? Yeah. <laughs> broken ding dong, <laughs> broken wonderful, ding dong, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, would you put this in the top two fifty, guys? Yes. Yeah, I would too. But hey! we're not gonna end the episode now because no. I'm gonna do a little thing right here. Oh, oh wait, oh, I, thought, I thought your Oscar talk was the thing. There's so this whole is, other thing. So the, the transition is that. Do you guys know how the Oscars work? Not particularly. A bunch of old white guys sit around and talk about what they want. Other people like send gifts their way and then they make some decisions. So that's kind of true. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been getting ridiculed for a long time about being mostly white. The peak increase from 2015 to 2019, there's this really good variety article that describes what's going on in the academy. It's from last year because there hasn't been much development this year because I think that no one thought it was going to happen this year. Um, I'm kind of still surprised that it is happening this year, but from 2015 yeah. to 2019, an increase of 35% of the total amount of people in the academy happens. It used to be like extremely exclusive and all you'd have to do, like anybody can apply to be in the academy, anybody at all. There's an email address. You send him your resume, what you've worked on in the movie industry. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend sending one if you've never worked on a movie before, probably not going to work <laughs> out for you, but <laughs> Like you have a chance if you've worked on a quote unquote major motion picture. I'm not sure what the definition of that is. Probably either a big budget movie or an indie movie that made a shit ton of money. Something like that. I don't know. Or donated money somehow. To right. One. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be money related. There's some pretty interesting things in here where people tried to make it. So you know how there's uh, little campaigns people have that go around and try to sell their movie and they spend a lot of money. They don't share the money sometimes, but like. Insiders say it's sometimes up to $50 million for an Oscar campaign run, just paying for oh, yeah. uh, hotels wow. and travel for the actors and screenings in the movie theaters and all this like fancy dinners, all these things, sometimes upwards of $50 million just to win an Oscar or you know Holy be nominated shit. or whatever. It's pretty insane. And there was a lot of, you know, I think when was this? Um, I'm trying to, where's that article? I was trying to like poke around. You it's get called, like the author. It's or Variety. Something. It's by Tim Gray. It's called How Does Oscar Voting Work? It was written in February oh. 5th, 2020. Quick answer. You need to be rich <laughs> and you need to be important. Yes. <laughs> but that increase yeah. of 35% is pretty huge. It was because they're getting a shit ton of flack because, you know, the only movies that had black actors in them were ones about slavery or ones that made white people look good for the most part. Right, right. Um, wow. So they were getting a lot of negative attention. Viewership was dropping off. <laughs> it's all about the money. Those viewers are going away. That's you got to right. change shit. That's exactly uh, right. They don't actually give a shit about anything. They're just worried about nope. their fucking wallet. It's all about the money. But at the very least, what happens is there's 17 different branches, they call it, of people who can nominate Oscars. 14 of those 17 branches have awards representing those branches. That's actors, cinematographers, costume designers, directors, documentary directors, editors, makeup artists slash hairstylists, music producers, music comma producers, production design, short films, sound, visual effects, and writers. Those are the 14 that have categories associated with their branches. There are three branches that don't have any awards, and those are casting directors, executives, and marketing slash public relations. Those three categories are allowed to vote on best picture for a nomination, and everyone else is allowed to vote for the nominees of their specific category. So editors are allowed to nominate other editors, and that's it. And then Hmm. also for nominations, everyone is allowed to nominate Best Picture. So if you're an editor, you get to nominate who you think, which movies deserve to be, you know, the five movies that are nominated for Best Editor. And then you also get to pick, I think it's 10 movies you get to pick. Yeah, it's 10 movies you get to pick for Best Picture. But if you're a casting director, you only get to pick 10 movies you think are the Best Picture. So once the nominees are in, then everybody gets to vote on everything. So it's kind of like the people who are professionals in those specific things pick, you know, otherwise, like, would you trust Drew Barrymore to pick best sound mixing? I wouldn't. 
Right. So I'm kind of right. glad that the other sound mixers. Where did are... that example come from? Yeah, like, poor Drew. Why are you picking on Drew? She I seems mean, like she doesn't really know what's going on. <laughs> she seems like a nice woman. I know she's oh, nice. Great. I did it because she's nice, and she wouldn't necessarily hate if I made fun of her. But she seems kind of a little aloof. She doesn't know how to mix things. I, I guarantee. Well, probably it. doesn't know about. I don't know. Wow. Yeah, it's like. Wow. I didn't mean was... it as an insult. I just wanted. Oh, to oh, oh yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. Would, would you have been happy, John, if I was like, they're not going to want Leonardo DiCaprio doing visual effects things? Yeah, I, I would enjoy that. That I would yeah, like. Yeah, oh, yeah, again, yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I, ever yeah. since Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I've, I've uh, softened my tone on Leo. <laughs> oh, who do you hate? So good in that. I was trying to pick one you hated because I knew you hated I Leo don't know who I hate while. anymore, man. I don't know. He doesn't oh, you're all full of love because of Minari? That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let him have this. You know Let him have this. Yeah. I don't know who I hate. Let him have this. Yeah, don't. But so that's basically so. Oh, wait, also, Mel Gibson probably. Uh, let, let Mel Gibson uh, go. But he's like he's dabbled I feel like in everything. He might know a lot after about Braveheart. A lot of things, I really yeah. am hating Mel Gibson. So <laughs> you were okay uh, with him after Passion of the Christ and the fallout from that movie. But it was rewatching a <laughs> Braveheart that really I never watched really Passion really of the Christ it him, yeah. intentionally. So oh, yeah. you didn't. Wow. No, you're one of like three no. Americans. That I don't think I've. Seen, I've not, I haven't seen it either. Really? Yeah. I, I would not recommend it. But I thought ever. I mean, that movie no. made a shit ton of money. Yeah. I saw the South Park where they made fun of it, and that was enough for me. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> oh, uh, God. Anyway, that was good information, Denny. Oh, there's more. I wasn't done oh, yet. Geez. And then there's more. And then there's more. By two. Right. So the way it used to be, there were five uh, Best Picture nominees before 2009. In 2009, they saw there was a lot of flack when The Dark Knight didn't get nominated for Best Picture because it made a shit ton of money. It got really good critical response. It, got, it won Best Actor. Uh, or Best Supporting Actor, Heath Ledger won for that movie. It's a great movie. It's rated number four on the fucking top 250. Generally, widely loved movie. And it didn't get nominated for Best Picture because five isn't enough. They figured, like, all the movies that typically get nominated are art house movies. And that was kind of moving away from that. Like, Titanic was one of the first ones. That was a blockbuster, that one. Lord of the Rings were a surprise. Like, The Return of the King is one Best Picture. That was a surprise. But that was also, like, they were giving awards to one movie for all three of the movies at that point. So yeah. I don't know if that counts. But yeah, The Dark Knight was the changing point. It went to 10. 10 was too much. They had too much riffraff in there. Uh, <laughs> so then they limited it. And so two years later in 2011, they, they went to between 5 and 10. You were allowed to nominate any movie of the year. And the movies that got nominated, it was a maximum of 10. And you needed at least 5% of the overall vote to be on the list. So if you have like, you know, five movies that are getting 20% each, there's five nominees. If you get like 10 movies that are getting 10% each, there's 10. If it's somewhere in between, you get like seven or eight or whatever we've been getting. Do you have huh. to be like in a guild or like a screen actors guild or what or like registered whatever if you're or uh, or you just say I do this. You, you just have documented that I did like the sound editing of this movie and that allows you to be in the sound editing category. It's a res it's it looks like it's a resume thing where they they do yeah. a background check and it used to be more stringent. But and huh. it used to be all old white dudes. But it right. seems like now it's getting better because this year it's the first year ever to have two female directors get nominated. It's the first year where two uh, East Asian directors got nominated mm. um, for best director. Like it, it's mm. moving in a good direction where it's not just Hollywood anymore. I mean, I think this movie, I don't know, is B plan B. Is that Hollywood? It might be not sure. Uh, plan B is a uh, Brad Gary, Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston. That's their production. Oh, company. So that's, oh, that's nice. Hollywood. That's Hollywood. Wow. Yeah. That's as Hollywood as it gets. Yeah. They did bunch The Departed. They did 12 Years a Slave and they did Moonlights and a bunch of wow. other ones. Wow. But those are the Oscar, the big Oscar ones. Huh. So they're, they're big. They do a lot of stuff. They do stuff. They do things. Dad and Jen working together. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that cutesy? <laughs> I'm surprised Playing they're, they're, with they're the still cutesies. doing it. Yeah. I'm surprised they're still working together. Yeah. Um, yeah, I they're still friends. They're doing, yeah, they're, they're still, still doing things. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how this year is going to go. They had, uh, so there were eight this year. So that means that there were probably a bunch of other ones that had just under 5%. Oh, and then also for the best picture, it's a ranked choice thing. So you rank out of the top 10 nominees or what, however many top seven nominees, top eight this year, you rank one through eight what you thought was best to worst. So it's not necessarily what gets the most number one votes. If number one 
if the first picture got like the most number one votes, but then no one else voted for it, then it doesn't win. It doesn't say exactly what the point structure is, but say oh. like, you know, the second place pick for the number one slot, like, right. Got like if, 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 it like, also got if, like, all the number like, twos. Uh, nine out of ten people pick uh, this one for second place, and one person picks his first place, then the the second place one wins. Yes. Or, or and and ah, so that's an interesting. Is, is that only for best picture or the other only the for other best awards picture. too? Only for so best picture. So the other picture. awards, how do they do it? It's just really more like Single who got pick. the most percentage. Single pick for the. Uh, oh, it's yeah. like you you get to pick the one, and then they just add up the total. Yes. Right? So okay. And they've ah, had to okay. split awards in the past because of that. But they've never had to split best picture because of this ranked choice thing. Hmm. I'd like the idea of them doing ranked choice racket. for everything. Yeah. But it'd be nice. It gets a little more confusing, I guess. I guess so. But it, it, it's it, like maybe, think and I don't do know. stuff. Yeah. Are you, how would you yeah, I mean, best picture, sure. Anybody I mean, it's also kind of weird, ranked choice. I'm sure not everybody has seen all the picture, like all the movies, right? Yeah. And everyone's not Denny who watches every yeah, fucking movie under the sun. <laughs> they have to watch them all, I would think. No, they don't have to. They don't have to. That's what a part of the whole uh, campaign thing is, is to make sure people watch the movie. They should watch all of them. That should they be the, should. Re- the prerequisite. They should, yeah. but they don't. It's fucking weird. That's lame. Yeah. That's so just it has to do with its popularity, bullshit. its momentum. It has to and do money. with how much money you spend on this campaign yeah. thing. Because right. part of the argument when they were trying to shut down that was one of the arguments was like, this is business and we're advertising our product. Fine. But also like, how am I supposed to get people to watch it? If they haven't, like, how am I supposed to win if no one's watched it? And even if, like, it's a good movie, you know, I'm not cheating by paying money to get them to watch it. If they don't like it, they're not going to vote for it's it. It's pay to play. They have to, like, subsidize it's all it. It's pay to play. Somehow, they're not, like, though, because be if they don't like it, they're not going to vote right, for it. Right, right, Where all the nominees are, like, shipped around to everybody somehow. It's, like, subsidized. I don't know. Everybody puts money it's into a pot. Some incestuous bullshit is what it is. That it would hard. never work. No I know. Way. Yeah. I know. They should just do, get rid of it. I mean, the only thing I, that I don't like about the way it works is I don't necessarily dislike it either because I mean, I don't know. Hollywood's an old white industry. Like it has been for a long time. It's not surprising that there's a bunch of old white people in the Academy. Yeah, and you just gotta wait until they die and right. everything will even out. But that's the only thing. Like <laughs> I like the way that everything else works. I like it how, you know, the sound mixers nominate other sound mixers. Like that's Yeah, that makes sense. Good, you know? Right. And then you have all the other people. gonna care about sound mixers? Right. Nobody. <laughs> And then you have yeah. Drew Barrymore picking, you know, putting her <laughs> yeah. vote in for yeah, best right. visual effects. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She doesn't know what she's talking about. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah I think we got that much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't dislike Drew Barrymore. That's all. I yes, that yes, he does. No, I don't. I honestly yes, don't. How could you just? I mean, if, if I did, I would. He just doesn't trust her opinion. think of somebody you know, like he, less. She's a very likeable. nice. She's a very nice girl. She just doesn't trust her opinion on yes, exactly. visual effects. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. I don't trust I wouldn't trust my opinion on the visual effects yeah. choice either. I'm saying she's a normal yeah. seems like a normal person. <laughs> Why are you picking on you? really walking back. It is not it. Doing Whereas well. Mel Stop. Gibson would go on a talk show, and if someone asked him a question about whether or not he knew about visual effects, he would pretend that he, he knows, did. Uh, even though well, he annoyingly, didn't. he's had a hand in almost all of that stuff, so he yeah. would qualify. No, in he the did. Very least on this thing to a Braveheart, he didn't have any control over any of that stuff. He just employed oh, really? people that knew. He had opinions. He, like then there was the lightning. That was hard. Yeah, the arrows uh, were, were tough. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. it's horses. I saw people I remember working the long scene. nights once. Yeah. Once. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't doing anything. No, I was just eating no. steak. Yeah, I like steak. True, <laughs> uh, what did I tell you about that? That's not the right visual effects. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. So that's basically what I got. This is awesome. Right. That was so cool. I that might be trivia. Yeah. Yeah. trivia. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, thank you, Denny. Wait. Thanks, Denny. I wonder how they're going to uh, do the Oscars this year. Minari, oh, Minari, oh, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Is there we it, go. It, I mean, it's delayed, right? So, yeah, it's in April, sometime in April. Yeah, I wonder what we should if we watch the films, we could do our own Oscar party or something, which might be kind of fun. Make our own predictions, but then I'd have to watch all the Oscar stuff. You got time for that? It'll happen. You got no. time? Yeah, there's not. Isn't it a couple weeks? A few weeks? It's in yeah. about a, yeah, maybe a month or so. But you got to watch. 14 hours of movies before then? Yeah. Ooh, no, I got to keep baby. up with this podcast. Well, yeah. the podcast could go into Oscar mode, but we could. Yeah, but I could, but I'm not sure if I really want to watch all that it's stuff. Two a week. Oh, dude, so, most but... of them are pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Ish, Promising Young week. Woman is, was really good. Was it? Yeah. What was that one about? Uh, 
I'm not going to try to describe it to you. All right. You can look it up if you want. But you you should watch it. It's uh, okay. it's and I wouldn't. I don't know where the trailer goes, but don't watch the entire trailer, depending on what the trailer does. <laughs> well, that's that okay. That, that really, uh, if it was one of the trailers that spoils the whole movie, it would really ruin the movie for you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Where you know the whole movie right when you finish the trailer. Right. I hate that shit. You show all the good scenes, and that's the end of the movie. I'll just say that a young I, woman and traumatized, and traumatized really like by it. a tragic event in her past seeks out vengeance oh, against oh, those who baby. crossed her path. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. It's good shit. It's very entertaining. All right. Yeah. Well, when I get my new TV, I'll watch it. Oh, you're getting a new one, are you? Oh, baby, am I? You get a 5 <laughs> 1 system and a nice big TV. What kind of TV are you getting? I don't know. The cheapest one I can for 55 inches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that picky. I just want 4K and 55 inches. It's for the living room. I have it's going to be Vizio, probably. They make good 4K yeah. cheap ones. Yeah, right. Vizio or T- TCL or uh, I don't know. And then I got to figure out the 5.1 system. That's going to be nice. It is going to be nice. Well, sweet. I think that's all I had for this one. All right. Cool. What do you guys think? Well, that was fun. Well, what are we going to do yeah. next week, though? Are we going what back to the list or are we, what are we going to do I, here? What's this list what you, you speak North of? by Northwest is next, right? North by Northwest no. is next. North yeah. by Northwest, huh? Okay. What's that about? It's fine. It's a Hitchcock film. Oh, boy. Hitchcock. Yeah. Oh, Hitchcock. Ah, oh, Hitchcock. Get it over with. Yeah, let's do it. Let's yeah, it what with. the hell. Yeah. Classic suspense film. Great. Classic. All Made right, it. boys. That's the time. Timmy, take it out. As the grandmother from this movie. Go. Marani, Marani. Why, 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 why? <laughs> Marani, Marani. Wonderful, wonderful. Marani, Marani. <laughs> wow, okay. Not bad. Not bad, Timmy. Not bad. Right, See guys. you later, boys. Later. All right, see you next week, guys. Stop.